Maratha Empire Protector Mysore War Shringeri Sacking British Alliance The Marathas came into conflict with Tipu Sultan and his Kingdom of Mysore leading to the Maratha Mysore War in 1785 The war ended in 1787 with the Marathas being defeated by Tipu Sultan In 1791 to 92 large areas of the Maratha Confederacy suffered massive population loss due to the Doji Bara famine In 1791 irregulars like Lamans and Pindris of the Maratha army raided and looted the temple of Shringeri Shankaracharya killing and wounding many people including Brahmins plundering the monastery of all its valuable possessions and desecrating the temple by displacing the image of goddess Sharada The incumbent Shankaracharya petitioned Tipu Sultan for help a bunch of about 30 letters written in Kannada which were exchanged between Tipu Sultan's court and the Shringeri Shankaracharya were discovered in 1916 by the director of archaeology in Mysore Tipu Sultan expressed his indignation and grief at the news of the raid. People who have sinned against such a holy place are sure to suffer the consequences of their misdeeds at no distant date in this kali age in accordance with the verse Hasid bi kriyate karma rudit bi ranubhuyet. Tipu Sultan immediately ordered the Asaf of Bednur to supply the Swami with 200 rahati in cash and other gifts and articles. Tipu Sultan's interest in the Shringeri temple continued for many years and he was still writing to the Swami in the 1790s. The Maratha Empire soon allied with the British East India Company against Mysore in the Anglo-Mysore Wars. After the British had suffered defeat against Mysore in the first two Anglo-Mysore War, the Maratha cavalry assisted the British in the last two Anglo-Mysore Wars from 1790 onwards, eventually helping the British conquer Mysore in the fourth Anglo-Mysore War in 1799. After the British conquest, however, the Marathas launched frequent raids in Mysore to plunder the region, which they justified as compensation for past losses to Tipu Sultan. British intervention In 1775, the British East India Company, from its base in Bombay, intervened in a succession struggle in Pune on behalf of Raghunathra, who wanted to become Peshwa of the empire. Maratha's forces under Tukojirav Holkar and Mahadaji Shinde defeated a British expeditionary force at the Battle of Wadgaon, but the heavy surrender terms, which included the return of annexed territory and a share of revenues, were disavowed by the British authorities at Bengal and fighting continued. What became known as the First Anglo-Maratha War ended in 1782 with the restoration of the pre-war status quo and the East India Company's abandonment of Raghunathra's cause. In 1799, Yashwantrao Holkar was crowned king of the Holkars and he captured Ujjain. He started campaigning towards the north to expand his empire in that region. Yashwantrao rebelled against the policies of Peshwa Baji Rao II. In May 1802, he marched towards Pune, the seat of the Peshwa. This gave rise to the Battle of Pune in which the Peshwa was defeated. After the Battle of Pune, the flight of the Peshwa left the government of the Maratha state in the hands of Yashwantrao Holkar. He appointed Amrutrao as the Peshwa and went to Indore on the 13th of March 1803. All except Gaikwar, chief of Baroda, who had already accepted British protection by a separate treaty on the 26th of July 1802, supported the new regime. He made a treaty with the British. Also, Yashwant Rao successfully resolved the disputes with Sindhya and the Peshwa. He tried to unite the Maratha Confederacy but to no avail. In 1802, the British intervened in Baroda to support the heir to the throne against rival claimants and they signed a treaty with the new Maharaja recognizing his independence from the Maratha Empire in return for his acknowledgement of British paramountcy. Before the Second Anglo-Maratha War, the Peshwa Baji Rao II signed a similar treaty. The defeat in Battle of Delhi 1803 during the Second Anglo-Maratha War resulted in the loss of the city of Delhi for the Marathas. The Second Anglo-Maratha War represents the military high water mark of the Marathas who posed the last serious opposition to the formation of the British Raj. The real contest for India was never a single decisive battle for the subcontinent. Rather, it turned on a complex social and political struggle for the control of the South Asian military economy. The victory in 1803 hinged as much on finance, diplomacy, politics and intelligence as it did on battlefield maneuver and war itself. Ultimately, the Third Anglo-Maratha War resulted in the loss of Maratha independence. It left the British in control of most of the Indian subcontinent. The Peshwa was exiled to Bithur as a pensioner of the British. The Maratha heartland of Desh, including Pune, came under direct British rule with the exception of the states of Kolhapur and Satara, which retained local Maratha rulers. The Maratha ruled states of Gwalior, Indore and Nagpur all lost territory and came under subordinate alliances with the British Raj as princely states that retained internal sovereignty under British paramountcy. 
Other small princely states of Maratha Knights were retained under the British Raj as well. The Third Anglo-Maratha War was fought by Maratha warlords separately instead of forming a common front and they surrendered one by one. Shinde and the Pashtun Amir Khan were subdued by the use of diplomacy and pressure, which resulted in the Treaty of Gwalior on 5 November 1817. All other Maratha chiefs like Holkers, Bhonsleys and the Peshwa gave up arms by 1818. British historian Percival Spear describes 1818 as a watershed year in the history of India, saying that by that year, the British dominion in India became the British dominion of India. The war left the British, under the auspices of the British East India Company, in control of virtually all of present-day India south of the Satluj River. The famed Nasik Diamond was looted by the company as part of the spoils of the war. The British acquired large chunks of territory from the Maratha Empire and in effect put an end to their most dynamic opposition. The terms of surrender Major General John Malcolm offered to the Peshwa were controversial amongst the British for being too liberal. The Peshwa was offered a luxurious life near Kanpur and given a pension of about £80,000. Administration The Ishtapradhan was a council of eight ministers that administered the Maratha Empire. This system was formed by Shivaji. Ministerial designations were drawn from the Sanskrit language and comprised. Pant Pradhan or Peshwa, Prime Minister, General Administration of the Empire. Amatya or Mazumdar, Finance Minister, Managing Accounts of the Empire. Sachiv, Secretary, Preparing Royal Edicts. Mantri, Interior Minister, Managing Internal Affairs especially Intelligence and Espionage. Senapati, Commander-in-Chief, Managing the Forces and Defense of the Empire. Sumant, Foreign Minister, to manage relationships with other sovereigns. Nyayadhyaksh, Chief Justice, Dispensing Justice on Civil and Criminal Matters. Panditrav, High Priest, Managing Internal Religious Matters. With the notable exception of the priestly Panditrav and the judicial Nyayadhisha, the other Pradhans held full-time military commands and their deputies performed their civil duties in their stead. In the later era of the Maratha Empire, these deputies and their staff constituted the core of the Peshwa's bureaucracy. The Peshwa was the titular equivalent of a modern Prime Minister. Shivaji created the Peshwa designation in order to more effectively delegate administrative duties during the growth of the Maratha Empire. Prior to 1749, Peshwas held office for eight to nine years and controlled the Maratha army. They later became the de facto hereditary administrators of the Maratha Empire from 1749 till its end in 1818. Under the administration of the Peshwas and with the support of several key generals and diplomats, the Maratha Empire reached its zenith, ruling most of the Indian subcontinent. It was also under the Peshwas that the Maratha Empire came to its end through its formal annexation into the British Empire by the British East India Company in 1818. The Marathas used a secular policy of administration and allowed complete freedom of religion. Shivaji was an able administrator who established a government that included modern concepts such as cabinet, foreign policy and internal intelligence. He established an effective civil and military administration. He believed that there was a close bond between the state and the citizens. He is remembered as a just and welfare-minded king. Cosme da Garda says of him that, Such was the good treatment Shivaji accorded to people and such was the honesty with which he observed the capitulations that none looked upon him without a feeling of love and confidence. By his people he was exceedingly loved. Both in matters of reward and punishment he was so impartial that while he lived he made no exception for any person, no merit was left unrewarded, no offence went unpunished, and this he did with so much care and attention that he specially charged his governors to inform him in writing of the conduct of his soldiers, mentioning in particular those who had distinguished themselves, and he would at once order their promotion, either in rank or in pay, according to their merit. He was naturally loved by all men of valour and good conduct. English traveller John Fryer found Shivaji's tax-collecting regime oppressive, describing it as poor people having land imposed upon them at double the former rates, and if they refused it, being carried to prison, there they are famished almost to death. While French physician Delon reports that Shivaji was looked upon as one of the most politic princes in those parts. The Marathas carried out a number of sea raids, such as plundering Mughal pilgrim ships and European trading vessels. European traders described these attacks as piracy, but the Marathas viewed them as legitimate targets because they were trading with, and thus financially supporting, their Mughal and Bijapur enemies. After the representatives of various European powers signed agreements with Shivaji or his successors, the threat of plundering or raids against Europeans began to reduce. Geography The Maratha Empire, at its peak, encompassed a large area of the Indian subcontinent. 
Apart from capturing various regions, the Marathas maintained a large number of tributaries who were bounded by agreements to pay a certain amount of regular tax, known as Joth. The empire defeated the Sultanate of Mysore under Hedar Ali and Tipu Sultan, the Nawab of Oud, the Nawab of Bengal, the Nizam of Hyderabad and the Nawab of Arcot as well as the Paliga kingdoms of South India. They extracted Chot from the rulers in Delhi, Oud, Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, Punjab, Hyderabad, Mysore, Uttar Pradesh and Rajputana. The Marathas were requested by Safdarjung, the Nawab of Oud, in 1752 to help him defeat the Afghani Rohilas. The Maratha force set out from Pune and defeated the Afghan Rohilas in 1752, capturing the whole of Rohilkhand. In 1752, the Marathas entered into an agreement with the Mughal emperor, through his vizier, Safdarjung, and the Mughals gave the Marathas the Choth of Punjab, Sindh and Doab in addition to the Subedari of Ajmer and Agra. In 1758, Marathas started their northwest conquest and expanded their boundary till Afghanistan. They defeated Afghan forces of Ahmad Shah Abdali, in what is now Pakistan, including Pakistani Punjab province and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The Afghans were numbered around 25,000 to 30,000 and were led by Timur Shah, the son of Ahmad Shah Darani. The Marathas massacred and looted thousands of Afghan soldiers and captured Lahore, Multan, Dera Ghazi Khan, Atik, Peshawar in the Punjab region and Kashmir. During the Confederacy era, Mahaji Shinde resurrected the Maratha domination on much of North India, which was lost after the Third Battle of Panipat including the CIS Satlaj states like Kathal, Patiala, Jeend, Thanesar, Mela Kotla and Freedkot. Delhi and Uttar Pradesh were under the suzerainty of the Sindhyas of the Maratha Empire and following the Second Anglo-Maratha War of 1803-1805, the Marathas lost these territories to the British East India Company.